Hi, all of us family. My name is Rachel Hankins and I live in Sassoon, California. And you can find bits of my in-process story in episode 21 called Dethroning the Idols in Our Lives. And you can learn a little bit more about my story in the Recount to Remember series um, at All of Us. Um, so today, you guys, I just wanna talk about mothering in the dark. Mothering in the dark. And the dark for me has everything to do with me being aware of my deficiencies as a mother and the questions that that brings up where I'm just not too sure, like, are my decisions screwing up my kids? I'm not too sure what's coming next. I am literally walking this journey of faith in the dark. I don't know if I am causing like my children to need a therapist. I really don't. I mean, I won't find that out for sure until like 20, 30 years from now. And there is this sense of the Lord just giving enough light for our next step and us taking that step and just not being sure um, about what's coming next. And also, like I mentioned, being aware that as much as we want to give our children everything possible, everything that they need, we're broken people. And until Jesus comes back, we're going to continue to be we're going to continue to be in this process of being made whole. And because of the deficiencies of our own brokenness, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to do things that hurt our children. We're going to do things hopefully as minimal as possible, but we're going to make some errors along the way. And yet and still, there's hope in God's word. There are mothers that have gone before us that give us an example of having deficiencies, of not having enough, but God's still accomplishing what he wants to do in our children. And so for that, I want to jump into Timothy, 2 Timothy specifically, um, first chapter, verse 5, where we get a chance to hear Paul speaking to Timothy about his grandmother and his mother, Lois and Eunice, who clearly had a deficiency. Like there was no father figure mentioned. And I know that can be kind of normalized in our society, in our day and time, but that had huge ramifications in this time. Having no male presence, having no covering of a spouse impacted your provision. It impacted your security. It impacted your respect among the town and, and everyone that was around you. And so she is literally raising this young man, this young boy, without so many things that could bring so much fear, that could bring so much awareness of lack. And in so many words, was her journey of mothering in the dark. But let's hear what Paul has to say about the results of this mama who persevered in mothering through this place of faith and her own deficiencies. And this is what he says. He says, I recall your sincere faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And now I am convinced is in you also. Y'all, this mother did it. Like she succeeded because in the midst of the deficiencies and the things that were missing and the things that weren't there, she did what was the necessary thing she focused on nurturing her faith. And it's the kind of faith that is a living faith, a faith that was genuine, a faith that was sincere, a faith that was purified, a faith that wasn't like filled with all the complexity and confusion that couldn't be understood by a child, but the kind of faith that was so easy to understand and see and feel and know that it could be successfully handed down from grandmother to mother to then to Timothy. And that is what I want to encourage us in today is, yes, I can see where I lack. You know, the past two weeks, I feel like I have had an especial um, level of an attack in insecurity around motherhood. And I was thinking like, wow, like, I don't know if I have the capacity to 
make the right decisions. I don't know if I have the capacity to show up well enough or if I'm giving my children everything that they need. And I had even accidentally attached my identity to um, a, a good mother to homeschool. And each year I have to like seek the Lord on what we're going to do um, with my husband and, and you know, seeking the Lord together about what we're going to do for the education of our children. And I was like grappling with that. And I'm like, oh, you know, like, Lord, what do you want us to do? And and just thinking like, oh my gosh, if we can't do this, like, is that impacting me being a good enough mama for them? And just all the things where the Lord had to correct me and just say, it's like, Rachel, if you do not homeschool your kids, like, do you not think that I cannot accomplish what it is that I've called them to do and that I can't protect them and that I can't cover them and that I can't do all the things? It's like amazing how easy it is for us to get our identity and doing a good job as a mama attached to the wrong things. And listen, I mean, your thing, I don't know what your thing is. It could be something completely different, but I just want to encourage us in the truth that with our deficiencies, with our brokenness, with our limited capacities that we mourn at times, that look what God was able to do in the life of Timothy, because this mama focused on the most important thing. It's so important for us to focus on the most important thing, especially because in this day and age, we're inundated with so much information, so many opinions from people that we don't even know, you know, like whether it's social media or what have you telling us what it is we need to focus on and how we need to show up as mothers. But you guys, I want to encourage us to take time to be still before the father, block out the noise and remember that as we take this time to wrestle in the dark, to build, to nurture, to fortify our faith. And we diligently teach that to our children. Y'all, like we have the ability to give them a, a kind of faith that bears a family resemblance. Like literally, Paul was like, this is that faith I saw on Lois. Like this is that faith I saw on Eunice. This is a, a, a depth of faith that it, it comes with time and that kind of wisdom and that kind of trust that we're building in the dark with Jesus, we can pass that on to our children. What a hand-me-down that is to pass on to our children. So I want to pray over us today. I want to pray for the mamas that are walking through the dark right now. So Father, I just thank you so much for every woman watching. I thank you, God, for the mamas that are walking through the dark in their mothering right now in this season, Father. I thank you that as they are aware of their deficiencies, that you are making them so much more aware that you are enough. I thank you, Lord God, that you are able to meet them right where they are in whatever season they're in, Lord, whether they are single right now, whether they are widowed, whether they are empty nesters, whether they are struggling with infertility and trying to get pregnant, or Lord, if their arms are full with children, wherever they are, I thank you, Lord God, that you are allowing them to see this time in the dark of trusting you, of being aware of their deficiencies, but aware of your sufficiency, Father, so that they are nurturing their faith in this space, Lord God. God, I thank you, Lord God, that they are allowing their faith to be purified, to be sanctified, to be full of integrity, to be genuine, to be honest, God, to be simple, Lord, so that we can imprint this on the next generation. I thank you that you make it clear to us that the fight is over our faith, Lord. With all the distractions, all the noise, Lord, help us to sift through that, help us to wade through that so that we understand, Lord God, that the most important and precious thing that we establish is a legacy of faith in our children, in our Timothys, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, that whether our child is born of our body or born of the heart, Lord, that you surround us with Timothys, Lord, that we can pour into, that we can live out a faith in front of God in such a way that it has family resemblance, that people can say, wow, that's Lois's boy, that's Eunice's boy. I thank you for the fire that you are building in the Timothys that are in our lives, God. And I ask that you teach them, Lord, how to fan that flame. I thank you that that flame will not go out, that it would blaze, Lord, as they stand up to their full height in you, Father. Give us strength, Lord, in this journey. Give us tenacity, Lord God, to continue in the dark and help us to value the wrestling, Lord God as you are sanctifying and fortifying our faith that we will pass down to the next generation. 
I thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen.